So this screen here is to basically verify your site with Google Analytics just like um, Search Console. The thing though about analytics is that it's much more complex, has much more information. So let's get a little overview of the interface first. Do you see at the top left you've got Google Analytics, Home, Reporting, Customization, Admin. The screen that I'm in is the Admin screen, which is a sub-screen. Because do you see also this back arrow right here? Click on the back arrow. That will then show you three columns. Account, property, view. All of this is in the admin screen of analytics. And when you choose any of the items from any of these columns, then the screen changes to focus on that one element. So that's why that back arrow takes you back to the three column view. The first column, you've got a drop down button there, and as you can see in our example, we've got all of these sites that we manage. You've only got one. Then there's account settings for the whole account. There's property settings for the property and so forth. User management, filters, history, and delete, trash can. So if you take a look at account settings under the account column, click on that, this again is going to show you some information. This is the part where you can change that if you want. Remember it asked us and I said no, but then we can say yes and change it. If we want to change the name of that folder, that account name, we can change it there. Under user management, we can give other people access to this data. So this happens all the time, especially for me. Like I've said, I'm part of a company where we do websites for clients. And so we would create, we would create the analytics account for the client and then give the client access to their own data. Some web design companies don't. They want to keep it all locked down to keep the person coming back and keep paying for the service. We're not that kind of company. We give the client all their passwords, all their login information. We don't hide anything from them. But if you want to add more people so that they can edit this or view this data, you go to user management. Don't worry about filters. There's just so much stuff we can look at, but there's filters. If you made any changes, it's going to be found under change history. And if you want to delete this, you can delete this. This is going to delete the account. Now be careful, of course, because as I said, an account is a folder. So if I've got a folder that has multiple things inside of it, like this, this folder has all of this information. And if I'm on the screen here, admin, and then trash this account, it will delete everything. The second column, property, this is where you can have multiple things to work with. If I jump over to another example like this, this particular account has these properties, these websites. The data of the YouTube and the Google Plus and the blog and the art page and all of that. That's what the second column is about. You probably just have one, main page. That's fine. But from that column, the properties column, you can add more, create a new property. You can add the YouTube page to track its data. You can add the blog specifically, etc. So here's where you can add more and delete this somewhere down here. From this properties column, if you look at property settings, this has some information here too. Maybe I don't want it to be called main site anymore. You can change that. Default view, industry, that's where you can change that stuff. Some quick data, advertising features, in-page analysis, don't worry about all of this stuff really. The defaults are just fine. User management, again, if I want to add more people to be able to view this, I can. What's the difference between this user management and this user management? Again, this is the folder. I can have 10 websites in this folder. If I add someone on this level, 
they will be able to see the data of all those 10 sites. If I add someone on this level, they'll only be able to see the data of that property that I chose. They can see the data of the YouTube, but not the blog. So up on this level, they'll see everything lower. In this middle level, they'll be able to see only that particular site. And you can even go as far as let people see only a specific screen of all of the 20 screens that we will have of that property. So it can be very detailed. JS tracking info. Most of the stuff is you don't really want to work with uh, or really deal with except the tracking code. That takes you simply back here to get your code again. If you need to get back to this screen, this is also where it will tell you what's the status. No data has been received. It's too new. This is not gonna, there's no verify button. It seems that you have to wait about 24 to 48 hours for this to work automatically. So maybe tomorrow when you, when you log back into analytics and come back to property tracking, tracking code, right there it might start to say set up and tracking data. And it'll tell you if it's working or not. Mine currently is not. And you can say send tra traffic. So you can kind of force it to, to send data, although that website doesn't exist. So that's where you would look at that. Everything else besides in that tracking info screen, don't worry about it really. Product linking, if you've got AdWords, AdSense, or other sort of Google products, you can link them together so all the data is shared. You've got a section over here that's also pretty advanced. Don't quite worry about this unless you are doing importing data from another source. If you've got social media that you also want to attach and work with, there's a social media button there. This is going to be attaching your website to your social media, but again, unless you have that, don't worry. I'm going to back up to the, to the view. You've got the account, the property, the view. The view is then the specific screens of data that you can work with. View settings. Uh, nothing there. Um, user management again. Goals. This is pretty useful. It's another complex thing. Under goals, we'll take a quick look under goals. Goals are one of the most important things that, a, uh, that an SEO company has to work with. How do we know we're being successful? We set goals. This can be pretty specific or pretty nebulous in that are we going to keep track of how many sales we made, how many hits we got, how many, what was the path? Did someone go to the home page, then the about page, then the contact page? That could be a goal. So under goals, we're not going to go through the whole process, but if I select new goal, am I going to be setting up a template or custom? What's the name of it? Maybe I can call it sales. Again, you can explore this on your own. I want to keep track of my sales. Do I accomplish a sale? Do I reach that goal? Does a user reach that goal? by visiting a certain page, staying on the site a certain time, or looking at a certain number of pages while they're on my site, or an event that they play a video. So under sales, perhaps I'm choosing a destination, and once they reach a certain page, sales.html. And I've got other details, and I save that. This will say, okay, if people manage to get to your sales page, that's a goal that was completed. This can be set up pretty complexly. I can have it set up that if they come from a tweet, visit this page, and then buy that product, that could be a goal that I set up that Google Analytics will tell me, you've got a 20% success rate. You've got a 2% success rate. You've got a 90% success rate. This is all going to depend on what you're trying to accomplish as a goal. I'm going to cancel that to back up here because I was looking at the custom goal and I've also got templates. If I look under templates, if 
put it back up here import from gallery these templates when, instead of creating a brand new goal from scratch I don't know what I'm doing I can go to import from gallery and here you will see a variety of goals that people have created already referral traffic contact form submission if I'm trying to see how successful people are sending how successfully people are sending me messages through my contact form that's a goal that someone already set up and it's used 11,000 times. I can import that and it'll automatically fill in those boxes for me. Here's another good one. Traffic from these platforms, from Twitter, Pinterest, etc. Now, uh, it seems that this one doesn't have very good ratings. This one's three out of five. That one's four and a half out of five. 10,000 usages. 11,000. So I could give it a try. It's free. And again, goals are useful, but they're complex and they're going to range depending on what your site is about. You can do custom alerts. So I'm jumping a lot, but custom alerts are also another way to uh, define things. Alert. Did something happen? Um, alert me when... You know, this applies to traffic. Alert me when something happens more than, less than, or something equal to. Send me, send me an alert when something happens. Are we talking about sessions? Are we talking about if I made goals? Did I reach any goals? What about my page views? Once I have a certain amount of page views and it's more than this, I get a certain increase, send me an email. So that's a whole section on alerts. And I can schedule email. So this is just the settings. This isn't even anything detailed yet of my site. I see I have all of these screens under admin. And if I'm confused about things, I've always got at the top right corner uh, this help, this little bell, and then the gear to go to help. So every screen here can be complex. But right at the top right under the gear, you can look up the help for more information. Without using theirs? Okay, you go over back to goals, and instead of using theirs, which is under import gallery, you just click new goal. See, import gallery will use one of their goals, and new goal will let me create my own. When you click on new, it just saying like, you want to do custom. And then you can go through there and select your custom type of goal. Okay, let's say then we've, we've explored this admin screen and done different things. I'm going to go back to the home screen. Home screen will show you all your accounts. One thing that I will say, it probably won't matter to you right now, especially if you're starting this brand new, but if you've got an older analytics account, here's something to be aware of. Um, so these are the various sites that my company works with. They've all got their own folder and all of their data shows up in their own folder. In the beginning, when we set this up for the first time, you know, five years ago, we didn't know this. What we did was, under the PMD Interactive, that's the name of our company, from that account, from that folder, what we did was we set up the different website clients. We put these different clients 
in this folder. Later on, what we wanted to do was we wanted to put a particular client in their own folder. The problem is there's no way to move it. I've been in contact with, with uh, Google. I've emailed them. I've been in tech support with them. There's no way to do it. Their own system that they own and control and manage, there's no way to do that, which is baffling. So it probably doesn't matter to you, but for us, this is something we would like to fix. Who knows if they'll fix it? We've been, you know, this issue has been around for years, since the beginning of Google Analytics, and they've never fixed it. I don't know if they're not able to, or they don't want to, or maybe it's fixable in the premium version, you know, to be cynical. But here, this client's YouTube data is on this account, and then their main website is on this account, and it would be, it would be amazing if we could simply drag this and put it up there, but it, it just doesn't work. There's no way. They might have changed it, but the last time I was on tech support with them a few months ago, there's no way to fix that. For you as a beginner, you probably don't have to worry about it. You create the account and start adding the, the properties. That's it. But the point of this then is that you will see all of this data let me just show you an account that's already got set up a bit. You have these columns. You have you have your website. You have sessions. You have average session duration, bounce rate, and goal conversion rate. So sessions within this time period, because if you look on the top right corner, there's my time period. I can switch that from last year to this year, a bunch of things. But from this time period, these are the number of hits basically. A session is a hit. There's a technical differences between a hit and a session, which I'll show you in a moment. But within this time period, there were 8,500 hits to that site. Average session duration. How long did a person stay on that site while they visited the site? 1.4 minutes, or 1 minute 40 seconds. This one's got 2 minutes. This one's got 43 seconds. This one's got a minute. This one is less than a second. So average session duration, depending on your website, a particular number might be good or terrible. If I'm an if I'm an e-commerce site, if I'm a restaurant site, this this particular site has two minutes on average that people spend. This one is one. This is almost two minutes. In those two minutes, people that visit the site often can accomplish what they need to. They visit the site, they buy now, they're done. Uh, so two minutes might be an average session duration, that's fine. What if I'm an author? What if I'm a blogger? If people are spending two minutes on my blog site, that might be terrible. They're not spending enough time reading my content. So if I've got a blog and I've got average session duration seven minutes, okay, that might be good. But if people are spending average session duration seven minutes on my restaurant, that might be bad. They're spending too much time on my site trying to figure it out and getting lost and not exactly using my site properly. So I can't tell you, make sure your average session duration is always three minutes. No, it depends on what your site is about. So those are some numbers there. Similarly, bounce rate. Basically a bounce is that someone visits your site, a page, and leave right away without well, not right away. They visit your site and they leave without viewing another page. 64% bounce rate on this restaurant, 31% bounce on that one, 74 on that one. So bounce rate, again, I can't tell you. Make sure your bounce rate is always under 30%. I can't tell you hard answers like that because it depends on your site. Perhaps people have set up a bookmark directly to the Order Now page of that restaurant. And therefore, they visit that site, they order now, and then they bounce. They leave. They don't need to go to the blog. They don't need to go to the contact page. They just leave when they're done on that page. So that's why a high bounce rate on that client might be OK. Again, if I'm an author with multiple blog posts and I have a high bounce rate, that might be bad. You're not spending enough time on my site. This particular one, 30%. It seems that they go to more than one page, and on another screen it will show us, of course, what those pages are. But on that client, they don't leave right away. They spend a little time on the site. Maybe they do go look at the gallery or go to other pages. And if you set up goals, 
there'll be a column of goal conversion rate. And usually these goal conversion rates are going to be really low, you know, in the, in the single digits and such. That's 1% goal conversion rate because everything has a low conversion rate usually. This flyer that's on the wall here that tells you to, or, to, or, to apply to that class, that might have a 1% conversion rate. People are going to look at it all day long, 100 people look at it, and two people sign up for the class. That's normal. That's a 2% conversion rate. Sounds terrible. But that's two people that just by looking at that sign up for the class. That's great. Obviously, I would want 100 people to sign up for it, but that's a very technical class, let's say. So here, if you've got 1% conversion, 2%, 5%, that's good. You have to check what your goal is, how attainable it is, and we'll see the details in a moment. If I've got 90% conver conversion rate, then you're probably rich because people are really, really accomplishing your goal, buying your product, or whatever goal you have. 0 0.76, 0 0.99. And then, of course, I can go into detail. I'm going to click on an actual client. It's going to show me overview for this month. I have several screens on the left to look at. The main dashboards, shortcuts. There's so many screens to look at. I can organize them into shortcuts so I can quickly view them. Intelligence and events. This is something that I need to educate myself more on. This is relatively new. Real time. This can tell me at this moment how many people are visiting my site. Right now, there's 1% on the site, but in the last half an hour, there were two people there. Etc. Etc. Where's the traffic coming from? Mostly here. So every one of these screens basically is going to have a main section with subsections. A moment ago, I was on audience, which was overview, and this gives me an overview of the audience. We've got audience, we've got acquisition, behavior, and conversions. So under Overview of audience. Can I pick up my phone at school? Okay, great. No problem. Audience overview. Here's more of the detail. Eight and a half thousand sessions in this time period from 6.8 thousand users, and they viewed 15 thousand pages. That's more of the traditional hits. 6 thousand people viewed 15,000 pages. And in one session, they could view just about two pages. That's why the page views is often higher than sessions. Uh, they count the session, and you can hover over these to give you an, some info somewhere. Total number of sessions. A session is the period time a user is actively engaged with your website and is associated with a session. On average, almost two minutes per session. Bounce rate again. New sessions, 78%. So new people coming to visit the site as opposed to repeat visitors. So more people are new to the site. Again, is that good? Is that bad? It depends on your site. Maybe you make a lot of business from new visitors. Maybe you have a clientele that always returns. So it depends up to you which of those two is better, a better statistic. So can you repeat it again, new sessions? This is new people. Um, Google is tracking who has never visited my site and who has visited my site before. So right here, with this amount of traffic, 78%, which is about 6,000 sessions, 6.6 thousand sessions, are new people, new people visiting for the first time. It breaks it down here under demographics. Again, this is all the information about the audience. Who is visiting your site? What was the language? Every time you visit a site, your web browser is giving away so much information that you may never have realized. And so what we're seeing here is that the number one web browser is set to English from the US. Various versions of Spanish. Russian is also some amount of traffic. 
Spanish from Mexico. I can further break it down by country. I'm not going to look at all of these screens, but we're seeing here similar things to um, Google Search Console, even deeper information, city. So right now, Los Angeles is more than double the traffic of San Diego. They opened a, a location in Los Angeles a year ago, and now a year later, more traffic to the website comes from Los Angeles than San Diego. Third most, Mexico City, because this is Mexico City style food. Not set, could be there in private mode or other, other things. Chula Vista, Ontario. I don't know if that's Ontario, California, or Ontario, Canada. Um, I think if we click, it might. Yeah, it's Ontario, California. Right, because Ontario, Canada is over here somewhere. So, again, all of this data that I'm getting could be useful. What's the number one web browser that people visit? Google Chrome. Second is Safari. Internet Explorer, Firefox, then Android. Microsoft Edge, which is Windows 10, is in ninth place, but a few months ago it was zero. There was no traffic from Edge. As we, tr as we keep tracking this in maybe one more month, it might climb up because more people are downloading Windows 10. That browser might be increasing. Well, let's look at operating system. The number one traffic comes from Android people on their Android devices getting on their phones and ordering quickly from their Android device. That's why maybe a high bounce rate. They've got the order now page saved so they just go to it quickly, order now, get their food. Second is iPhone. So the largest traffic is coming from mobile. Third is Windows. Windows Phone. Pretty small traffic there, but even smaller is Blackberry. Time Warner Cable seems to be the highest service provider than T-Mobile, Cox, etc. On mobile, you can further break it down. Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, etc. Service provider there. Screen size. The largest screen size is a relatively small screen size. Not these new, big, cool, high-def screens. I'm not going to look at all of these, but I could go in and look at what the details of language, and what about the technology of their site, and this is kind of cool here. User flow. This will show you in a graphical way. People start off, well, let me change it here. Um, from the US, their mo most hits then go to the home page. Second most go to the menu, and so forth. And then after the home page, then they go to the menu. Well, if they start on the menu, they go to this other page. And then there's, of course, the bounce rate that they leave. That's a whole section on audience. Acquisition is one of the important ones. I'm going to jump down to acquisition, traffic, referrals. This is what will tell you in detail where is your traffic coming from. Traffic from Yelp, Facebook, the LA Times, Yanksana Connect. Well, I can go even deeper if I click on LA Times, eventually it'll tell me the exact page, the 101 best restaurants. So there's an article on the LA Times, the 101 best restaurants, and that particular link from the New York Times, uh, you have to be signed in, but that link from that article is going to the client. So one of the most important screens Acquisition, all traffic, referral. Where is the traffic coming from? I can get an overview conceptually under source. Meaning, 
in general I can also see another another view here I like referrals better because it's more detailed information this is kind of an overview obviously look at that a lot of traffic from Google most traffic comes from Google second most comes directly they know the address by heart and they just visit the address they type it in or maybe it's in their bookmarks and they visit directly and then the third most is Yahoo channels is related to that organic search direct referral social someone is on Google they type in keywords that's an organic search they find this page they go to it 5,000 58 percent so 58 percent in this time period traffic from people doing a regular Google search 29 percent is direct traffic again they they know the address directly it's bookmarked referral these are links from other websites other websites referred this clients website and social traffic from social media which you can then always click to drill down further get more details Yelp number one then Facebook then TripAdvisor then Google Plus Foursquare etc in this time period we weren't that active on Twitter so it doesn't show up but we're more active on Facebook it's showing their Facebook is getting good traffic So here is answering the question, are, is, is what I'm doing working? Am I being effective? Is, it, is anyone looking at my tweets? They'll be listed here and it'll say, I tweeted on this day and look at the traffic it gave us. We tweeted on that day and there's the traffic. So that's showing then your traffic, how effective you were, which tweets or Facebook posts or Instagram posts and such were effective. And that's why this Google Analytics concept, once you set it up, it's a very valuable thing. But there's so many screens here I'm not going to get a chance to get to. Um, here's if you added conversion goals, it'll be there, its own screen here. There were 84 goal completions. If a dollar value was assigned, it would say how valuable were those completions. That's a completion rate of about 1% to the book a table. So when people visit, when people visit that page, um, this is the percentage of completion, and it's mostly from direct. People go directly to book the table. Second, from a Google search. Third, from Bing, and then Yelp and the rest. Obviously, if I set my time horizon, right now it's one month, if I set it for show me everything this year, January 1st to right now, this has been set up for a couple years, it can show us a lot of data, and so in this whole year, the, there's been 1,100 completions of that goal, 1% conversion rate, Again, and this now it shows it flipped around. You more results are coming from a Google search than direct, and then some results from Eater, from Yahoo, from Yelping down here. Travel Channel. Someone visited the Travel Channel and then booked a table. So knowledge is power, and Google Analytics is all knowledge. Well, the power that you have here is to know. Who's your audience? Where are they coming from? How long are they on my site? What pages are most linked to? Is our social media working? Is the e-commerce working? Can you focus, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. that is the uh, the dollar amount, the, the, the goal value? When you're setting up a goal, there's a box in there that says, how much is this goal worth? So let's say I've got a page on my, on my website where I'm selling something for $5. So I'm going to say, if someone completes that goal, that was $5. So then this would show me all of those completions has added up to, in, in theory, $10,000. We didn't set that there because it's a little more complex for this because there's so many products with so many prices. They could be set up very detailed, but this is enough of a goal that we're seeing 
that when someone starts the process, they don't abandon it. That happens a lot. If the, if the checkout process is very complex, people give it up. So apparently, in this time period, people don't give it up. It's straightforward enough, it's effective enough that people complete the goal. Look at how many they put the table when it was starting. Yeah. Go by months. So we'll see here. Toward the end of the year, this is dropping down. Less people. And that could be various reasons, coupled with other bits of data. Maybe we weren't as active on social media to promote. Maybe. <clears throat> at a specific time of the year, people don't want to eat out. But in August was a pretty high mark, less in September, and then October, November. So that was going down. But you, you can compare. This is a very complex system, but a lot of data. And the sooner you set it up, the, the more information it will give you. So we're going to wrap up the main lecture. We've, I've introduced a variety of concepts of Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools, Google Search Console. The sooner you set this up, the better, because you'll get all of this great information. Any general questions? We'll have a little bit of lab time if you need any more help. Um, Next week will be the last day of the class, and in that day we will talk about uh, Google, Google Drive and Google Docs. So to create collaborative documents and all of that. So we'll end at this point, have some lab time, and uh, we'll do it again next time.